Hi everyone. In this video, we'll continue to understand the basic concept of probability. To understand probability and to define it mathematically, we need to understand some new concepts. The first concept is a set. Now, what is a set? It's a collection of elements. An example of a set is a set of natural numbers. Now, each element of the set is a natural number. Now, if x is an element of a set, we denote that by x element of s. Now, if a set does not contain any elements, it's called an empty set or null set. Now, if a set contains every possible element, then we call it the universal set or sigma. Now, a set can be finite or infinite. Now, what is a finite set? A set consisting of primary colors red, blue, and yellow, that's a finite set. Now, if we can enumerate the elements of an infinite set, then it's a, we say that it's a countable set. For example, the set of positive integers. Okay, So it's an infinite set, but it's countable because the, the numbers are 1, 2, 3, all the way up to infinity. Now, if you cannot enumerate all the elements in that set, then it's still an infinite set, but then it's called an uncountable set. For example, the set of real numbers. You cannot enumerate all those numbers. So if it's an infinite set, it can either be a countable set or a uncountable set. Now, if you want to describe a set, we usually use the curly braces. For example, if you roll a die and we're talking about a sample space, we could write it like S equals 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and use curly braces. These are all the elements of the set S. Now let's look at some of the properties of sets. Now, the universal set is a set of all objects that we might possibly be interested in. That's a set of all possible objects. Now, say you look at a particular set S that you are interested in. Now, in this figure, this is that set. So S, this is what you are interested in. Now, complement of S, which is done by S, C, contains all the elements in sigma that are not in S. Essentially, in this particular figure, these, this shaded area, that is basically S complement. Now, we say that S is a subset of another set t okay so we say that s is a subset of t if every element in s is also in t so each and every element in s is a part of t therefore s is known as a subset of t however there can be elements in t which need not be part of s okay so if you look at this figure here this particular figure then you can see that every element in s is also part of t but there are elements in t here which are not part of s now if s is a subset of t and t also is a subset of s if both these conditions hold true this can only happen if s and t are essentially the same set so here we have been studying some of the properties of sets and we'll see how this these properties of sets is helps us understand the concept of probability and define it now Let's continue with some of the properties of sets. Now, we're going to study three different properties. The first is union, which corresponds to this figure, intersection, which corresponds to this figure, and difference, which corresponds to this figure. Now, the union of two sets ST is denoted by SUT, that's union of T, is a set of all elements that are either in S or in T. That is, or in both. So if you look at this figure here, figure one here, you will see that S and T are two elements, two sets which intersect and S union T is the set of all the elements that either are in S or in T or in both. Now intersection is denoted by the in this way, S intersection T. It denotes those elements that are in both S and T. Essentially, the shaded area in figure 2. Now, those are the elements that are in S as well as in T. Now, the difference is denoted in this way. 
s slash t. Of two sets s and t, the set of elements that are in s but not in t. So essentially, you can see the shaded area in figure 3. Now the difference can also be denoted in this way. S difference tree is essentially the, the intersection of S and T complement. Now, having studied um, these basic definition of sets, we will see how that is useful to understand the concept of probability and to define it. Now, how do we define probability? Now, the probability law assigns to an event E. So we have an event E, which we defined in our previous video. So the, what the law of probability does is that it assigns a non-negative number, which we denote as P of E. Okay, And this number, P of E, encodes our belief or our knowledge about the likelihood of E. Essentially, the probability of E encodes the belief that we have or the information that we have about how likely this event E is, is to occur. So that's what, so it's a non-negative number. Now there are certain axioms of probability. First axiom is, it is defined on events. So for each and every element A, you can think of any element, sorry, any event A, what you will have is probability of A must be greater than or equal to zero. So it's a belief of the likelihood of something happening. If you believe that something is unlikely to happen, that event is going to be have a probability of zero. So it cannot be less than zero. So probability can never be negative so because it's a belief or the knowledge that some event is likely to occur. The next axiom of probability is the additivity property. Now, if you consider two disjoint events, so this is where the stuff that we studied about set theory will come in. So if their A and B are two events and they're disjoint, then the probability of their union, which is A union B, is basically P of A union B equals P of A plus P of B. This is going to occur if A and B are disjoint. There is no intersection between them. And if you consider the union of multiple such events which are all disjoint, it will basically follow from the additivity principle that we just talked about. Now, when you consider the entire sample space of events, now an event has to occur, it has to be part of the sample space. So any event that you can think of is part of the sample space. So the probability of the entire sample space is equal to one. So whatever event you can think of, that has to be part of the sample space. So the sample space has to occur because that is the set of all possible outcomes of the experiment. Now let's look at some examples of probability to, uh, probability to understand that. So let's assume that you toss two fair die together. Now we're interested in the probability of the event that the sum of the rolls is equal to six. So the event that we are interested in is the sum of the rules. And we're interested in that event that the sum of the rules will be this value, six. So first, we have to figure out what the sample space is. So note that you're rolling two fair die, okay? And our sample space is denoted by ij. So what does this mean? So what are the faces on the die that can occur? So essentially we can have something like one comma one occur that is the first face of the first die is one. The face on the second die is also one. We can have one comma two occur, which is the, the face on the first die is one. The face on the second die is two. One comma three, dot dot one comma six. The next set is, it's two comma one. That is the die, the face of the first die is one, of is two. The face on the second die is one. The next one is two comma two. That is both die, have a face of two and we'll have two comma six. Now extending this logic, we'll have something like six comma one, six comma two, all the way up to six comma six. That is both die end up having six on their faces. 
So in all, we can see that there are going to be 36 options. Like each little row has six options and there are six such rows. So there are a total of 36 outcomes. That's your sample space. Now, we assume that the dies are fair, that they are not loaded in favor of any face. So that means that each outcome is equally likely. That is because the die is a fair die, when you roll it, the chance of you getting a four or a three or a two are all the same. Because they are all the same, each outcome is equally likely. And here we have 36 outcomes, which means that every outcome has probability one over 36. Now, once we get to the state, we can now try to, un try to answer the question, what is the probability of the event sum of the rows equal to six? Now, this is a compound event, right? Now, you can get six in multiple ways. 1 comma 5, 2 comma 4, 3 comma 3, 4 comma 2 or 5 comma 1. If any of these uh, options occur, you will get the total sum to be 6. Now using the law of additivity, which we just studied uh, right now, was because these are all independent, disjoint events, we can add all of them up. Okay, and each event has a probability of 1 over 36. So you add 1 over 36 5 times, and you will get the probability of the event as 5 over 36. Now, we'll look at uniform distribution a little later, but this is an example of a uniform distribution because all the outcomes are equally likely. Okay, so now that we have looked at the laws of probability as well as looked at an example, we'll conclude by looking at some additional uh, rules of probability or properties of probability and these properties can be proved using additivity and the non-negativity rules. Now if you assume that there are two sets A and B, now if A is a subset of B then probability of A is less than equal to probability of B. Okay so that's Likely because if A is a subset of B, every element in A is also part of B, but there are elements of B which are not in A. So probability of A is less than or equal to probability of B. Now, if you look at how do you determine probability of A union B? Now, A union B will occur if either A occurs or B occurs or both occur. Now, when you consider A union B, A has occurred and B has occurred and the common part of A and B has occurred kind of twice. That's why probability of A union B is probability of A plus probability of B minus probability of A intersection B. Now, just by an extension of this rule, we can say that probability of A union B is less than or equal to probability of A plus probability of B. The equality sign will occur when A and B are disjoint. Now, by just by extending this to, to three sets, we will have probability of A union B union C as probability of A plus probability of A complement intersection B plus probability of A complement, in, complement intersection B complement intersection C. Okay, you can just extend this to more sets. Okay, with this, I'll conclude this video. So. Before I conclude, I just want to iterate all the things that we studied in this video. We looked at sets and we looked at different properties of sets such as union, intersection, difference. Then we used set theory to establish and study the axioms of and properties of probability. Essentially, we studied the non-negativity uh, property of probability, that is the probability of the event can, is always greater than or equal to zero. Then we studied the additivity property of probability and we also realized that the probability of the sample space is going to be one. Then we looked at an example of rolling a die on two dice together and we found out what is the probability of the different events and for getting the probability and the probability of getting a particular element or number on the face. And then we used the different properties to so study the properties listed here. Essentially, probability of A union B 
is equal to probability of A plus probability of B minus probability of A intersection B. Thank you for watching and if you like this video, do subscribe to my channel.